What's up, Lashinistas? Welcome to the show. This is the Live Bay Podcast, where we talk about the ever-growing eyelash business. If this is your first time listening to our show, welcome. This podcast is dedicated to helping you grow <laughs> as a lash artist and or lash business owner. So whether you work for yourself or someone else, this podcast is for you. Hey guys, this is Mike and Shauna Jones. We are the owners of Live Bay Lash. Our heart is to share with you our uphill battle in this lash industry and to show you what started out of a tiny bedroom in a house extremely broke has turned into an eight figure company. We are here to encourage you during your last journey and to give you guys a real raw version of what things really like. Yes. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the keys to building a successful mm -hmm. salon. If you've ever dreamed about opening your own salon or scaling your salon, this one will help you out quite a bit. But before we jump into that, we do have a word from our sponsor. Gloss Genius. Gloss Genius is made for salons and spas. Gloss Genius is the only business management and payment platform that makes it easy to grow revenue and enhance the client experience. From a beautiful online booking site to the powerful marketing tools and low payment processing rates, Gloss Genius empowers you to run your full salon in a stylish and smart way while feeling supported on every level. For 50% off the first two months, go to glossgenius.com slash sign up and enter livebayS22. We are moving over to Gloss Genius. We've tried Booker. Well, first was Setmore. That's free, but it was such a pain in the butt. Then Booker now Mevo, and now we're transitioning into Gloss Genius. So we really like the support that we get 24 seven with Mevo. It's a little bit difficult, so. Okay, um, we also have some neat things going on. Um, don't forget, we do have a warehouse in Canada. So um, it's amazing. There's tons of products up there. We don't have everything fully up there, but soon we will. You just have to start, um, you know, buying from us up there. They're building a, a newer facility up there. They will have more stuff eventually yeah. here. And you can do like walk-in um, or curbside. It's going to be really cool. Uh, then we have our subscription boxes. So they are 99 a month. And you get $200 or more of Live Bay products every month in a new custom box. It's super cute. It's such a great value. And you have three different tiers to choose um, just based on your experience. Yeah. And then our membership. Membership, 99 bucks a month. It's for, you know pretty much anything you can think of outside of the box. Amazing mentorship. You can from call Mike us at any I. point in time. We'll walk you through stuff. Yeah. 20% of products. One zoom, 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 one zoom, zoom, <laughs> one zoom, which is also known. Yeah. As you just have access to Mike and I. Um, and then we have our classes for uh, June and July, $400 off, which is amazing. And you only need $300 to sign up for your deposits. So wow. Um, yes. Uh, last but not least, we're going to be at LashCon. It'll be November. I think it's like six to the eighth or something like that. You can yes. check it out, thelashconference.com, mm -hmm. and get your tickets. I think there's only like 34 of them left. Yeah. It's going to be a big, wild turnout. We're going to be there this year. We're going to be speaking, and we have a booth. Yeah. So you can come by, say hi, get drunk with us. So exciting. Yeah. We'll have we'll our see, kids. We'll see how many people we can offend or piss off in one weekend. <laughs> Stop. Uh, all right. Jumping into the episode. So the biggest keys to growing a successful salon. All right. So let's start hypothetical here. You're already graduated beauty school. You've been lashing now for a handful of months you're starting to get your sea legs you're feeling comfortable with your tweezers you're starting to book up steadily and you realize that you could be making more money not only just lashing for yourself but also hiring some people to either booth rent or to come work for you okay and you're now lost you know you're you're talking to a realtor and they're telling you hey go out and get this nice giant space make it look posh get a construction loan and all that stuff sounds great in theory but point number one i would say is to start small Okay, find a very small space that you could easily afford yourself mm -hmm. without going under and start by hiring one or two at most lash artists to work for you. Okay, I've seen too often where people go out and they build this giant Disneyland looking salon. It's 3000 square feet. They go in debt building it. They open the doors and the clients just don't show up like they thought they were going to. Now they have no cash flow and they have to end up closing the doors on the place. All right. The other issue is if you hire too many stylists and it's slow, all that hard work you're going to be putting into those lash artists is going to make them uh, want to quit because they're not getting paid. You could be the best trainer or motivator in the world, but if people aren't getting paid, they're going to want to find themselves out the door. So my wife, when we first started out, I told her, hey, listen, you can hire one lash artist. How many did you hire? Three. All right. So she hired three. <clears throat> and back then we were so broke. We didn't have that many appointments. And we literally wrote checks for $36 that week. Yeah. And they somehow stuck around. Yeah, I was going to say too, just, it, it really just depends because every person is so different. Um, 
how I like knew that I needed to just hire someone or I hired three, but whatever is I was just so busy. Like I was, so if you're just maybe just getting lazy, but you don't even have like a full book, like don't think about it because you can't be lazy, especially when you own a business and you're managing other people. Or even if you're, if they're booth running, like you're, they're still booth running from you. So I would just wait until you literally can't take anymore. And you're just like working your butt off. And then also think about, Hey, for the first two months, if I have zero clients, am I going to be able to pay this rent? Because, you know, people think like, you know, even if you have clients now, like, are they going to follow you? Which chances are they will. But what is your rent compared to what you're paying where you're at? So those are things to look at. Um, You know, we marinated even when we had moved our one location that was an office space into the new building. We were we were we had double recliners in rooms like we were just stacked and packed to the gills. (laughs) Literally, we were we should have gotten a new salon probably a year prior to that. But we decided we wanted to keep making as much money as humanly possible. We were still figuring things out, still learning how to use a booking system, still learning how to use a register system. Mm -hmm. You know, there were so many things that went into play with that. And um, I think so often people get so concerned with trying to look the part of of success that they forget to actually be the part of success. And what happens is because you're so busy trying to look that part, you just end up killing yourself with that cash flow. you know, there's our salons now, they're big, they're plush, they're nice. But there's times where I wish back, we could go back to that tiny little office space that we call a salon because it was, you know, it was super profitable, it was easier. easier. Yeah, life was simple back then. Sometimes I wish I could just go back in my room by myself. Yeah. That'd be cool. Suck your thumb. (laughs) Yeah. Go to sleep, get a little pillow. Yes. Uh, You know what's crazy? Our our Scottsdale location is really great, you know, because it's, um, it's an older building. It's like a family owned and they weren't as interested about getting like a name brand, like uh, anchor tenant in there as they were as just finding somebody long term just to, you know, pay the bills. So they gave us a smoke deal. You know what I mean? For we have a 10 rooms over there, a little retail area, you pay like four grand a month in like a really nice uh, part of Old Town Scottsdale. Mm-hmm. That rent is unheard of. Like yeah. it is unheard of. For that big of a space and, and right like in. Um, an area, a retail area like that, so where it's just nice. walking in shops. You know, I had I had people call me all the time, or even people in the membership, they'll call me and say, hey, I'm looking at the spot, you know, they want this much per month, and then they want percentage rent, and they want all this other BS. And percentage rent is basically where they look, they ask you to send your sales in every month. And if your sales are over a certain amount, they want a percentage of your gross sales. Doesn't matter what you're making net profit-wise. You could be making 100 bucks a month, but you're bringing in 50 grand a month, and you're mismanaging, and things just aren't working right yet. And they're still going to want a percentage of the gross sales as well. So if you ever get somebody with a, a lease that says they want percentage rent, run. Number two, when you get that lease, the sweet spot is really around two fifty to maybe three bucks max a square foot, and that includes all of your common area maintenance charges. Like is that for camp. every? Is that for like ever, anywhere? For anywhere, that's really the sweet spot. Okay. Because you start paying any more than that, you, you're not. It's it's gonna be impossible to make any money. And I understand like you're like, it's Beverly Hills. It's on Rodeo Drive. I get all that, but unless you are charging like six hundred bucks a set, it's just not gonna make sense. So trust me, when I tell you around two fifty, three bucks max is the sweet spot for you to be profitable. That's a true story, and that's where you should be looking. The other thing is people get afraid. They're like I don't want to use a realtor. I don't want to pay commission. That's a big, big misconception, okay? You don't have to pay a realtor, okay? If you're looking for a commercial space, that realtor gets paid by the landlord, and their commission is based on a three-year or five-year lease. If it's a one-year lease, it's a very small commission. If it's a three-year or five-year, they get paid a premium on the actual lease itself up front for for that actual lease itself. So you don't have to pay them a penny out of pocket. They'll find spots and tell them what you're looking for. Be like, hey, if you want a spot with the individual rooms built like what we have, just say, hey, I'm looking for a spot pre-built. You know, our Centennial building, I'll give you two examples. Scottsdale cl- costs close to 200 grand to build after COVID with all the uh, high inflation. construction costs and inflation and everything. Yeah. Uh, Centennial cost us $16,000 to build because it was an old weight loss, center. weight loss center in a strip mall next to, you know, Trader Joe's and 24 Hour Fitness and all the major mm-hmm. like big name brand stores but they had pre-built individual rooms that you'd go in like a clinic, close the door. And so all we did was go in and knock down some dividers, you know, repaint it, make it look nice. And 16 grand later, yeah. we had a fully operational salon. And it makes a ton of money for eight rooms, right? Yeah, it's our most profitable based on the size of it. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm like texting because um, 
Olive has GERD, kids GERD. She does have kids GERD? Yeah, sorry, my... Um, she's at the doctor, yeah. Just from eating fatty foods. It was probably triggered by when we were in New York and she was just eating crap because our kids really don't. They eat pretty clean. Anyways, that's why I was on my phone. I feel bad. Mom guilt? That's Mom okay. Guilt, yeah. Eric could cut you out of the shot anyway. <laughs> just on me. So. so you didn't even have to apologize. Okay. I was just going to say, so I think that was point number one, two. Kind of yeah. two. That was probably two with the um, broker thing. But I was going to say this is like completely opposite. But... I think that one of the things that you, this is going to make you succeed in bringing on more people and actually starting like your journey as a salon owner is you have to have certain characteristics yourself. So if you're going to be like a leader, you're going to be a boss babe, or you're going to be an owner, like there's things that you're going to need to do and need to realize um, before opening and starting to manage people. Because if you don't have your shit together or you're impatient or you're money hungry or you're in it for all the wrong reasons, or you're mismanaging funds, or you don't have enough money, then you should not be opening. Because those people, if you're not booth running and you're doing commission or whatever, you're paying hourly, you're responsible for those people and their paychecks. And that's what feeds their families. So it's it's really, you need to think about like where you are in your life um, before managing other people. Because you take them under your wing. And you know, like we have a responsibility and we take that very serious when people come to Live Bay any entity that we have actually we take that extremely serious and that's why I think I put so much like frustration and guilt on myself if like something's not going right because I know that like I have we have you know almost 200 people working for us that's huge so but like livelihood yeah so that but it's just important if you have one or two like it's still so I think that just making sure that like you have your ducks in a row for sure I think that's that's super important and and you're not making emotional decisions, which is so hard. It's really hard. Trust me. I battle it every single day, every day in work and off work. It's very hard. And it took me a long time, like to become like, you know, non-emotional when it comes to business. And it's hard. Especially when you get a bad review. Yeah. The kid in you wants to be like, listen, MF or I just still run to the bathroom though. I'm like so upset. I'm like, Oh, so business isn't easy, but you definitely just want to make sure that like you're you're good to go because people are going to look at that. And, and in one way, too, you're a role model to those people. Hey, listen, I was going to say this, too. You know, the other question we get a lot is, you know, do I bring in all these employees Do I or do I only booth rent? And I think the answer to that in the beginning is you do both. Okay? We did that. We did that. We had five rooms at our very first, <clears throat> if you want to call it a salon, it was an office. office space. Uh, but we had five rooms. Two of the rooms were booth renters. I think one paid us, what, 400 a month? It was uh, one of my friends, so it was like nothing. Yeah, it was nothing. And the other, the other one paid 500 a month for the bigger room up front. It was yeah. 900 bucks. Our rent was 12 So that basically, you know, almost covered the rent for the month. And mm-hmm. then we had three other rooms we could put our employees in and feed them clients. Um, at some point, as you get busier, you're going to need the space for your employees. And the booth renters will have to go. They're, they're a good... Um, band-aid if you will to help pay the rent now Mm -hmm. but what's going to happen is you're gonna go okay uh, let's just even say your booth running is 400 a week right let's call it 1600 for the month is what you're charging somebody right for booth rental that's great but if you have a sales rep like we do or lash artist like we do that's doing 3500 a week in sales right that's fourteen thousand dollars a month that lash artist is accounting for even if you're paying 50 percent commission that's seven thousand dollars you're making off of just one stylist versus that booth rent you're making over here. So again, it's a fine line. Yes, you do have a couple booth renters, you do have a couple employees. The booth renters mm-hmm. will help supplement mm-hmm. the bills, but at some point you're gonna realize that you're losing money by just renting that space that you could be throwing commission artists in, they could be splitting a chair, and you could be throwing two stylists in a room, putting up a divide. I mean, there's so many ways you can get creative. So that is one of the, my best, my biggest like takeaways when we first started, and I, I recommend this to anybody starting out, the other thing is when you first start that salon, you want it to be successful, don't go all in yourself personally and quit your day job. So if you have a part-time job or another job you're working, you need to keep that job. And or I, if you're lashing. Or if you're lashing, keep some clients to pay your own bills, okay? I've seen too many people go and try and start a place and just quit their job, and they just jump all in, and that's great to jump in, but that's a really big risk you're taking and not having any cash flow coming in. You know our story, we've said it before, we were mortgage bankers and that helped supplement a lot of the bills. If we didn't have that second job, we would have never made it. This Mm -hmm. podcast wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. Um, Those are great points. Thank (laughs) thank you. Sorry, I am listening, I swear. I'm pulling a mic. Then then I'll do the final point for us. (laughs) No, those were all good points. I think we did over three. 
I know. I'll give a final oh, point. Oh, I will give a final point. Can I do it or you? What's yours? Mine was about the booking system. Mine was about contracts. Ooh, then it looks like we get two points. Okay. Make it quick. All right. You got to get a good booking system. Uh, a lot of the people in our membership right now are like, we're writing out appointments. People call in, we text, we write it down. That's not an effective booking system. And I know what you're thinking. Yeah, I keep good notes like, and it's great. Here's what a good booking system does. A good booking system tracks their name, phone number, and their email address, right? As well as like little notes you can put in about allergies, date of birth, things like that. A good CRM, a good booking system will allow you to send out discount codes and promos. You look at the books on Tuesday, there's no appointments, but the weekend you're booked because everyone wants to look, you know, blinged out and, and lashes on fleek before time to go party, right? On those Tuesdays and Wednesdays when it's extra slow, instead of cutting people, you could be sending out promos, come in today for 10 bucks off, mm -hmm. come in today for 20% off. And if you're not tracking that stuff in a database where you have their phone number, where you can text blast or email, where you can send them out, you're leaving money on the table. Because those are, once you've paid for that lead to get them in the door, they now live forever in your <clears throat> ecosystem where you can always remarket them. I was going to say just about contracts. It's so important that you go from, like if you're going to be an individual, you're an individual lash artist now and you want to, you have to switch your mindset from lash artist to business, right? And, you know, we get flack all the time, you know, like, oh yeah, I left Live Bay, whatever. Like they didn't let me take my clients or they, whatever. First of all, in my business, I know the shelf life of every single person. Like we know the shelf life of a lash artist to a T, right? But there is a business side. And if people are scoffing at um, non-competes or contracts that we have them sign, they're not a business owner, okay? Like I'm not a growth stunter. Like I want people to evolve. I, I love seeing some of the people where we parted ways and we're still cool and they're growing and they're doing amazing things. Like I want that. Like I know there's only gonna be a certain period of time where people are with me, but this is also something that Mike and I have built. This is a business. It's just like a business that you're gonna build or you already have built. Or just like as a solo lash artist, you have policies in place. So it's the same thing. It's just on the business side. So with that being said, it's so important to have contracts, whether it be a non-compete or if you're doing booth rent. If you're doing booth rent, just make sure that you have everything documented. Because if you're not, if you're doing a hand a handshake deal, like that's not going to work. So, you know, do the best you can. If you don't have money to get an attorney like we didn't at first, Find something on the internet that's bullshit like Mike did, and you will just get sued. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you can even just- Sorry, I don't have a law degree and use legal Zoom. No, I'm just saying, but just make sure everything's documented. Like even just type something out and have- Didn't have know, the money for attorney fees yeah, back then Yeah, have a witness either. and have it signed or whatever. But like also, if you're spending money, <laughs> excuse me, edit that out. See, that's I'm getting stressed you knocked out. Me. You knocked me, that's your voice cracked. Out. No, I'm saying, but if you are going to be paying for leads for these lash artists, they aren't their clients, they're yours. So a non-compete is protecting you and your business and most of all, your money that you've invested. I understand as a lash artist, people are going to love their clients and get friendships and all that fun stuff. But at the end of the day, it is still a business and people need to respect that. I see both point of views, but if you're in a non-compete and you're signing it, you're in a non-compete and maybe some don't hold up, but there's things that you can do to- Make their life hell. Kind of, yeah. Outspend them. So, but it, it's not about Discourage that. It's them. just about put them out, run their little hopes and dreams. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's the, it's <laughs> it's just a business side that people don't understand. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, if you're in, if you're in this thing just to make friends and <coughs> do Instagram posts, you're in it for the wrong reason. There, yeah. there's a business side that nobody wants to talk about. That is, you know, dark, and you got to put your foot down sometimes. And that's why I have my wife because I'm a softy. Do it, yeah. Yeah. But at the end of the day. You know, you have to, like she said, to protect your money and protect what you've built. Yeah. Because otherwise people are just going to keep taking swipes at it and trying to take what you For have. sure. I mean, and look what we've built from literally nothing. Of course I'm going to protect this. And now I have good attorneys and all that fun stuff. And you will or you do now. But, like, you have to flip that mindset. And if you don't understand, then chances are you're probably still a sole lash artist that doesn't have a business. And that's not a dig. That just means that, like, you haven't entered into this side of the business where you would understand where a business is coming from yeah that's it those are super like those are super not just eye-opening points but like super great points for anybody who's thinking about starting out or who's on the fence who just doesn't have anybody in their circle to bounce ideas and never would have thought of these things i mean this is this is rock star advice from two people yeah. who have taken their their wounds right like we've we've gone through it um as always that's all we got for you guys today but if you haven't done so yet please make sure to subscribe to the youtube channel subscribe to our podcast we're now yes. on spotify too right eric amazon amazon uh if you also get a chance 
if you can think of anybody else who could greatly benefit from our podcast, always please refer a friend. We don't charge a fee for this. Our fee is simply if you got value out of this, please refer somebody else who could greatly benefit from it. Yeah, and Lash Lash Tea. Uh, join the Lash Tea on Facebook and the Lash Meltdown. Awesome. That's all we got for you today. Have a good one. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.